What's up, boys? Call sign Grammy here. Welcome to a Ready or Not 1.0 release video on how to command the AI like a pro. I did this video on the channels uh, a while ago, and it was greatly received by the Ready or Not community here. And now that 1.0 supports a single player uh, campaign, it means even more people are going to have to experience, you know, a single player uh, play of this game. And in order to do that successfully, you're going to have to really command the AI in the most efficient way possible so that you can get those high A grades on your mission runs and survive them because this game is very challenging and brutal. And so if you wanna have any success in that, you're gonna to need to have a couple of the core concepts down on how to uh, manipulate your AI, the uh, understanding of what you can do with them. And now with 1.0, it expands what you can do with the AI even further. It's really, really incredible uh, how much more you can do. So big kudos to the uh, Ready or Not development team for that. And shout out to my man, Martin over there. So l let's start talking about this. All right, in the bottom right corner of the screen is gonna have your quick context menu. Uh, depending on what you're looking at, it's gonna give you a quick call out action to give to your, your team, your units. So uh, right now I'm just looking at this plant or whatever, and it just gives me the command right now to have my team fall in. But the minute I swing over and I look up at the stairwell, now I can give them a quick command to move and clear the stairwell. So remember that the first things first, you're always gonna get like a quick context there in the bottom right corner that you can hit your Z button for the team to execute. Now, within your entire unit here, which is, uh, which is designated as the gold team, that is going to give the command for the entire, all four members of your, of your AI team to execute whatever command you give them, is going to be represented in gold lettering. So anytime you see anything in gold, if you hit that button, it's gonna make the entire team do that. However, within your four man AI unit, there are two two man AI teams. Hopefully that makes sense. You got your red squad and your blue squad. Now you can get creative and really maximize their efficiency by splitting them up and having them do different things, especially when you get into uh, close quarters, multiple rooms, you can have one team go here and one team go over there to clear and do various things as you kind of run as a unit commander on scene and you're kind of dele uh, uh, delegating duties to them. Uh, so uh, in order to do that, you're gonna use your scroll wheel on your mouse here to cycle through the different colors. And there's just three. So gold remembers all of your units. Red is gonna be the two man red team and blue is gonna be the other two man uh, team over here as well, your AI. So Again, you can do different things with them and let's start kind of diving in to what we can do. Now, one of the cool things that you can do here uh, is now you can actually have your, your team set up in different formations as you are moving down hallways, open spaces, and so on and so forth. So in order to give them the command to do this, you're gonna to need to pull up the full AI command context menu. In order to do this, you're gonna press down on your middle mouse button, your scroll wheel button. And once you do that, you'll see here, as long as you're not pointing at anything in particular here, I'm just pointing at a wall, you're gonna get the full context menu here. So now when we do this, you can see here, you have options one through six, move in, fall in, cover, hold, deploy, search and rescue. What we're gonna do here to access the menu to give them the command for whatever kind of formation you want them to take, we're going to press two for fall in. Once we hit fall in, you're gonna see now we have new options for single file fall in, double file, diamond and wedge. Now to quickly break down when you're gonna to wanna to use each of these here. So single file, pretty self-explanatory. When you're in tight quarters, real narrow hallways, rooms, you're gonna probably wanna use single file here to make that a streamlined movement down those kind of tighter corridors and paths and all that. Double file, and when you're inside of a corridor but it's a lot more room, you can split so that the teams um, are, you know, you have two on one side, two on the other as you're going down the hallway. So a double file. Diamond, um, it's gonna be a better situation here. Let's see if we can, I don't know if we have enough room to demonstrate this in this particular spot right here. Um, perhaps if we go down and do that, and we'll get them to kind of do that as we go here. Let me pull them in here. We'll go diamond formation. Let's see if this actually works. And, and it does, you can see them right there. You've got the uh, trail playing rear security. You've got your two guys in the middle sweeping left and right. And then you have your uh, second in line right behind you uh, with the point. So as you are moving back, I'll walk backwards. You can kind of see them kind of uh, come down the steps here. 
and they should regroup once they come down the steps. And there they go. And there you go. You got your diamond formation. Pretty straightforward right there. Now let's go and switch that around. Let's pull up our context menu again. We'll hit fall in. We'll hit uh, wedge. It's going to be number four. So they're going to shift themselves over here. And again, we might not have a lot of room for this, but you'll kind of get the idea here. Um, and now you can see how they're running in a wedge. And they're more fanned out. So this is going to be great for your open areas. When you have a big open area, you want to cover all these different kind of uh, angles. Um, a wedge gets everybody spread out a bit more and it's more functional for those for those uh, kind of uh, spaces. Now, a much easier way to remember which one to use is depending on the size of the space that you're in. The tighter the quarters that you're in, start with single, single foul, and as you open up space and get bigger and bigger and bigger, you work down that fallen list to eventually get to the wedge, which is gonna cover the widest amount of space. So top to bottom, tightest conditions to the most wide open conditions. And that's one way, a simple, very simple way to know which one you might want to use as you're moving about. Another great thing that we can do as of 1.0 is that we can give individual commands to the team. So they've now further expanded your uh, the way you can utilize your team members here, right? You can utilize them as an entire unit. You can utilize them at the team level, the two man team level, and now you can utilize them in the individual level. Now, in order to uh, do this, you're gonna pull up your AI context menu, and then you're going to point on the AI unit teammate that you want to give the command to. So here's Lee, and you can see once we hover over him, we go from gold, which we're in currently in the entire unit command list, we sweep over onto him and it goes white. That is when you are going to give an order to that individual only. Only So white is for the individual units, gold, red, uh, and blue. So at this point, I can tell them a couple of things. I could say swap with, search an area, deploy shield, and let's say we want him to move and I'm gonna point over to there. And we should see him move over there off to the side. And what's cool about it is that he's gonna hold an angle right there and set up and you know can cover us. He looks like he's covering the rear for us. The next AI unit moves up to the two spot. And if you notice that, and we'll give him a command and we'll see as these guys keep moving up, we'll tell him to go. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Move and go over there. Now, the third AI moves in to take the two man spot. And you can really do this to fan your, your AI out to cover different areas. As you can imagine, you can do quite a few different things now with this ex ex expanded ability to command your AI units at the individual level, which is super, super cool. Um, once you're done with that, you wanna get them back in line, just hit uh, the fall in for the all units in gold, and that'll bring everyone back into formation. And it's as simple as that. Again, you can give commands to your individual teams so we can have a red team and we can give them a command and you'll know when you open up the context menu, you know that you are on your individual teams when you have that red or blue color. Uh, one cool thing that they've done now that you can't hear it because I've, I've lowered the uh, in-game audio so that the voice lines don't over talk me here is that when you do cycle through the colors, uh, your character now makes a call out to give you that vocal uh, verbal confirmation of what team you are giving the order to. So as you flip the gold, it'll say gold team, red team, blue team. Uh, and that's something that I didn't have before, which is a nice touch. So you have visual and uh, audible uh, confirmation of who you're gonna give those orders to. So in the heat of the moment, you don't kind of mess up or hopefully at least alert you to who you're gonna be calling out. Um, so now if we have, say for instance, red team here, uh, we can tell them to go to say for instance, um, over in this door, we want red to come over here. So we're gonna pull up the context menu. You can see that, uh, if you get out of my way here, uh, we'll go three for them to cover that door. You just point that direction and now you'll see red team is, is lasered in on that door. They're watching this area, they're covering this area right here. They're gonna handle that. Um, if I flip over to blue and I give them the command for this side, we'll pull up the context menu, make sure we're blue. I'll hit cover number three over here. And now you see how they swing over and they're watching that door. So at this point, when you are working in these uh, spaces, these houses, these rooms or whatever, and you want to do different things at this point, you know, what's great about splitting up your teams is that if you have multiple doors in an area and you want to start clearing one by one, 
Um, you don't want to invest all your members into, say, this door, and then you get collapsed on from the rear. So you can have uh, one of those teams, red or blue, sit out and cover your six in the kind of like the main lobby or the hallway area, while then you go clear in with the other team. And it's a three-man sweep into the room there. Very, very functional and efficient. Um, even with the AI improving in 1.0, I still like to go in those rooms uh, with... with not everyone, because it can still get clunky in tighter quarters, uh, but I just like doing it that way. And this is a preference thing. Uh, play it how you want to play it. You want to take the entire entire unit in there with you, by all means do it. But I like this way. I think this is this is going to be way more uh, realistic, in my opinion, uh, when you split your team and someone's holding and covering the, the main corridor or the main lobby area while a smaller uh, you know two-man team goes in to clear a couple of the smaller rooms. So you can really get that granular kind of experience when you divvy up and you assign your your individual teams to do different things within the context of the menu here. Um, coming up to the door, let's let's go up the stairs. We're gonna have them fall in. So we can go to some doors and demonstrate some of those breaching and stuff like that. All right, so we're coming up to the door here. A couple of ways to do it again. Uh, going on the door, we're gonna have them stack up. And now what's also cool is they've, now added the ability to set up uh, different ways to stack up on your doors. You know, before you would say stack up and they would just do a generic stack on every door the same way, you know, it's fine. But but again, with 1.0, uh, Ready or Not has really expanded that ability to, you know, the immersion and added more things that are more realistic. So uh, we'll hit one for stack up and we, you can see our options here are gonna be for split, left, right, auto. Um, split means, uh, this is, I believe this is what they were doing in the prior to 1.0 release where you'd have two on each side of the door in most cases. Um, so that's kind of familiar there. Now they've added left and right. So depending on the the room you're in, uh, you know, how it's laid out, you may not be able to do a, uh, you know, stack on a split stack. So now you can say, hey, just stack all on the right or the left. Uh, based upon whatever the kind of room that you're in allows you to do. So you have just way more functionality. It, it's more realistic. So we'll have them stack. And let's just say there's not really a lot of room over here. Um, let's have them stack on the left on this one. So we'll hit uh, stack and then left. They're going to stack up left. Let's watch them all line up on that door. Boom. That is freaking beautiful, boys. All right. Point man's ready. The two to three men's there. And you've got your uh, fourth man covering the six. Um, love to see it. Another thing that uh, happens now is that they are supposed to adjust to you. So right now, if I'm playing it as a tactical commander and I'm just giving them the orders to, to breach, I could play it out this way uh, or, or move into any one of these spots. So, but let's say I want to jump in. I set them up. I want to jump in on point. We're just going to walk in here. And you can see that he shifted out of my way a bit. So now it opens up the opportunity for me to go in and you know, take point and then move in. Uh, so you, you got a lot more functionality that way. And the AI really adjusts. See, the minute I pull out, now the point man is, is back on point. And then if I want to jump back in to take over point, just push myself in there. And he moves back a little bit. He's still kind of close, but <laughs> he move out of the way. And then as I move, he'll jump back in. Uh, so that's pretty cool that you you can do that and the AI knows that you're there so that it will adjust to allow you to jump back in there. Um, if we open up the command again, we do stack up, um, auto, we could do auto stack up and that'll kind of just do the auto. And this is typically what, you, we, what we would see in the prior to 1.0 version of the game where they would stack up just like this and do the thing. Um, now, again, uh, you got a lot of other options here on things you can do. Obviously, you can mirror under the door, wedge the door, cover, open door, and then you have various ways to breach. So we hit breach. Now you can breach with a shoddy. Uh, you could kick in the door, C2, or we can do based on the lead, which is a new thing that they've added to the AI. We're going to hit lead and we'll do, um, let's do flashbang. So I'll move into the spot here. He moves back. All right, perfect. Now they're waiting on for me to execute. So at this point, I'm gonna open a door and there it is. 
At this point, they're waiting for me to go in there and then they would follow suit. I'm not going to do it because we're still kind of working on the demonstration here. But that was beautiful. And the minute I move out, the reason they're going in now is because I re removed myself from the leader position. And the minute you do that, the AI recognizes that uh, you're no longer the lead and they will execute that command. So the AI is definitely smarter. Uh, another thing that I've noticed too with the AI is when you come into the rooms before you had to do everything manually, right? You'd have to secure weapons. You have to secure guns or uh, weapons and, and, and uh, hostages or civilians and suspects and all that stuff. Uh, now, when you come into the room, they'll actually automatically sweep around and detain and call in uh, to talk uh, for anybody that you detain or where, or any kind of suspects that are down. Um, that's super cool. You know, that, that, that's a little bit of a quality of life thing. Uh, not that we're too lazy to hit the F button to secure people, but you know, just them coming in and having the ability to do that. Um, <clears throat> definitely uh, makes it just that realistic level of immersion that the AI is now capable of, of understanding that and, and being able to do that. Um, so we're seeing a lot of this stuff. Another really cool thing I've noticed with the AI now is once you enter a room, they are pretty efficient and, and, in going in to clear it in a very smart way, in efficient way. They're they're in, they're moving around these corners really smoothly. It's been a really impressive experience here. Now, getting back into the command aspect of your AI, um, you can see that here in the room, they spread out, they're kind of holding their positions. You've got one locked in on the door. You've got uh, this guy watching another uh, room right here. Um, they set themselves up perfectly in here. I'm really impressed with what I've seen so far. Now, while we have one of our team over here holding down this area, let's let's go ahead and demonstrate what we can do at the individual level here. So we're going to click on our context menu for the AI. Lee is right here. Um, we're going to go ahead and tell him to move, and we're going to tell him to go into the room to go clear that. He's going to go in there, and if there, if there's anybody in there, he would you know go ahead and, and neutralize them. And this is perfect, right? One person for one room, it's not a big space. You don't need all of your team in there, right? So he's done. Now let's click on him. Flores, move in, let him go clear it. So so you got protection from your other team members that are in the, the bigger area, bigger area over here. And you can have your other units go in to clear some of these individual rooms as they stack on those doors and holding angles on it. So again, I, I love this. It just extends the ability to do so much more and functional, um, especially when it comes to like, let's say for instance, you know, this room, we come in here, there's two entry points into this room. Uh, you know, another thing you can do. All right. You know what? You're no really of use there. Let's kind of move you right here. All right. And then let's take this guy and oops, let's go ahead and take this guy and we'll put him right here. All right. So now they're going to move again, the opportunity to protect yourself so much more. You can stage two individual units, AI teammates at those entry points. So you don't get backdoored. And then two of you, the other two AI units that you have, you guys can go ahead and clear the rest of your rooms and, and, and do all these things, right? You can go in here, search for any kind of other uh, evidence or, or anything like that. Uh, and then boom, 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 you're done. And you're protected most importantly. So that individual control of the AI is going to be so useful. And I think um, I think it's going to be such an underrated uh, addition to 1.0 that I hope more people will utilize as, as you can really set it up uh, to help you out and, and really get, go through those tougher missions more with a better chance at, at being successful throughout all of it. Some other things that I want to remind you of that you can interact with the doors uh, if you're going to do certain things. So you pull up your context menu here. Um, you can remember, you can utilize some of your equipment before you even go through that door. Uh, there's, you can do the mirror, uh, you can wedge the door so you can make sure no one comes in from that door. Once you've gone through it, you can have someone cover the door or open up the door. Uh, so again, it's not just about, uh, breaching, you know, um, or opening it. You can open with a flashbang, a stinger, go with the leader, stack up on the doors and do these with the new additions to it, whether you're splitting left, right, or auto. Uh, and then don't forget that we also have that fall in where you can utilize the single file, double file, diamond, and wedge formations as you're moving through uh, various kinds of spaces. Overall, man, you know, utilizing the AI is going to be the, the, the 
best way and most important way to be successful in the single player uh, portions in the campaign of Ready or Not. And hopefully as you are utilizing them uh, the proper way, you get to experience some some great gameplay, uh, great experiences here because with 1.0, man, it's really impressive, really excited. You know, I've been involved at Ready or Not since once they first launched. I mean, I was here at the ground where this game, the units were damn near like polygons and it easily could have looked like a Minecraft shooter, right? They were, they were very rigid. Uh, everything was super rough, you know, paid the 100, whatever it was. I just believed in the game and I, it, this was the best money spent, I think, on the game uh, ever, to be quite honest with you, for this kind of an experience, for what they're developing. So again, a uh, big shout out to uh, Ready or Not devs, man. Keep up the great work. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, kind of walk you through. Um, I'll link to the prior version of this video, just in, for the event that you want to go through that one. Uh, but I pretty much covered all of the things that you need to know about uh, the AI context menu, how to manipulate them and getting into even these, you know, individual level control that you now have with 1.0. So if you enjoyed this video, you want to see more ready or not content, please like subscribe to the channel. I cover, uh, you know, tactical shooters, immersive, mil sim, the flight sim, DCS, uh, anything that's tactical combat. As a veteran myself, I love and enjoy. And if that's something that you love and enjoy, then uh, sub to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Call sign Grammy out.